The 20th of August, 1947, Lüneburg, Germany. After more than eight months on trial, 23 defendants, who either participated in a deadly Nazi euthanasia program, killing mentally ill or physically disabled people deemed unworthy of life, or who conducted cruel, painful, and often lethal medical experiments on thousands of prisoners without their permission in the Nazi concentration camps during World War II, here their sentences read. Thanks to the gruesome testimonies of dozens of witnesses, the world finally learns the truth about these devastating and inhumane experiments, which violated medical ethics by both their means and their ends, and required approval by the SS chief, Heinrich Himmler. One of those who performed these pseudo-medical experiments is a German medical doctor, Fritz Fischer. Fritz Fischer was born on the 5th of October 1912 in Berlin, then part of the German Empire. As with millions of Germans in the 1930s, he believed that Hitler and his Nazi party would create a strong Germany, fix the economy, and put people back to work. Thus, in February 1934, he joined the SS, and in 1937, he joined the Nazi party. After he completed his studies of medicine in 1936 and received his doctorate in 1938, he became a surgeon. World War II started on the 1st of September, 1939. Two months later, on the 1st of November, Fischer became a member of the Waffen-SS, which was the military branch of the SS. He was assigned as the assistant surgeon to the Hohenluchen Sanatorium, where injured or convalescing SS men were treated. In 1940, Fritz Fischer became a troop physician of the SS Division Leibstandarte Adolf Hitler, which was an elite division-sized unit during World War II. After he was seriously wounded during fighting on the Eastern Front, Fischer was posted back to the Hohenluchen Sanatorium and worked in the nearby camp hospital of the Ravensbrück concentration camp. Here, he actively participated in the surgical experiments carried out in concentration camp inmates, mostly Polish female prisoners condemned to death without their consent. At Ravensbrück, Fritz Fischer and his colleague Hertha Oberhäuser became the assistants of Karl Gebhardt, who had been sent to Ravensbrück to conduct medical experiments on inmates in treating infections with sulfonamide, which was an early antibiotic. After an assassination attempt on Reinhard Heydrich on May 27, 1942, when Heydrich was attacked and wounded by Czechoslovak paratroopers, Karl Gebhardt refused to treat Heydrich with sulfonamide, and the Nazi architect of the Holocaust contracted an infection and died eight days later. In Ravensbrück, Gebhardt wanted to prove that his method of treating Heydrich had been correct and that sulfonamide was useless in the treating of infections. As a result, all three, Gebhardt, Fischer and Oberhäuser, started to conduct medical experiments on healthy prisoners, mostly young Polish women, who would become known as the Rabbits. They carried them out ruthlessly, as human life meant nothing to them. They often used a hammer to break legs of female prisoners, then infected the open wounds with aggressive bacteria and monitored the healing with and without antibiotics. Another employed method of these experiments was to spread a mixture containing gangrenous bacterial cultures into an incision, which was made 5 to 8 centimeters in length and 1 to 1.5 centimeters in depth on the outside of the lower leg. The wound was then closed, and the limb encased in a cast which had been prepared. However, the infections which resulted from these experiments were not typical of battlefield gangrenous infections. In order to simulate battle-caused gangrene, they added tiny fragments of wood and glass to these wounds, which would simulate the crust of dirt customarily found in the battlefield. The prisoners were subsequently monitored and treated with and without antibiotics. Another purpose of their experiments was to determine the effectiveness of sulfonamide on the bullet wounds. To simulate battlefield conditions without actually shooting the patients, Fischer, together with Gebhardt, decided to tie off the blood vessels at either end of the muscle, so the affected area becomes a fertile field for the growth of bacteria. Most of the prisoners became sick from the gangrenous infection. In better cases, the prisoners ended up with an amputated leg and mutilated for life. But in the worst, they either died in pain within a few days, or were shot. They also experimented with removing and damaging nerves, muscles, and bones in the legs to see if they would regenerate. They even attempted to transplant the limbs from one person to another, believing it could help in treating amputee soldiers. In Fischer's trial testimony, 
He describes in detail how he removed a prisoner's arm, including the scapula, wrapped it in a clean sheet, and drove with it back to the SS hospital of Hohenlichen to hand it over to Professor Gebhardt, who would surgically attach it to a German patient. It is perhaps most terrifying that these horrific medical experiments were often performed without any anesthesia. After the war, Fritz Fischer claimed that his behavior towards all patients on whom he conducted these cruel medical experiments was very considerate, and that he was very careful in these operations to follow standard professional procedure. In May 1943, Fischer left the concentration camp and went to the front. In August 1944, he was wounded, and as with his concentration camp victims, had his right arm amputated. After the war, the unethical and inhumane medical experiments which Fritz Fischer had conducted were uncovered, and he finally faced justice for his crimes. He was arrested and tried at the Nuremberg Doctors' Trial, where he was one of the few doctors who showed signs of remorse over his actions and openly talked about how he felt badly for operating on healthy young women. To defend himself, he claimed that the order to conduct medical experiments on human beings had come from Adolf Hitler himself via Heinrich Himmler, the head of the SS, and that it was his duty to simply obey and do what he was told. He also claimed that his participation was solely that as an assistant, and it was not his function to analyze the legal situation. When he was asked if it was permissible to experiment on persons condemned to death without their consent, he replied that he had acted at the time as the soldier Fisher, not as a doctor and a person. Fisher compared his situation to the one in which the individual soldier fires a torpedo against a ship or when another soldier is under orders to drop bombs on an unprotected city. He believed that they all had to overcome their innermost objections and felt themselves to be justified in what they were doing through the fact that they were acting under military orders, contributing to the victory of their own people and nation. When he was asked about Hertha Oberhäuser, who murdered numerous women by injecting them with petrol, and who was involved in forced abortions of women who were already seven or eight months pregnant, he said that she played no active role in these experiments, and added that he had the impression that Oberhäuser had had a human connection with the prisoners in the camp. In the summer of 1947, the military tribunal found Fritz Fischer guilty of war crimes, crimes against humanity, and membership in a criminal organization, the SS, and sentenced him to life imprisonment. However, his life sentence lasted only a few years. In 1952, his sentence was reduced to 15 years, and in 1954, Fischer was released for good behavior. Although the German authorities restored his license to practice medicine, unlike Hertha Oberhäuser, his fellow colleague from Ravensbrück concentration camp, Fritz Fischer never returned to the profession of a doctor. Instead, he started a new career at the chemical company in Ingelheim, where he stayed until his retirement in 1978. In 2003, when he died at the age of 90, he was the last known living of those charged at the doctor's trial. There were no tears shed for Fritz Fischer. Thanks for watching the World History Channel and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips, give us a like and see you in the following episode.